Welcome back to the Roundtable, Season 1, Episode 4. It is November, uh, what is it, number 16 today? 16th. Holy smokes. I'm here with my co-host, uh, Ryan Souders, once again. And, of course, we'll have a bunch of uh, guests on today. Coach Christopher from Women's Basketball, a couple of student-athletes from our soccer programs, and, as always, the uh, uh, information guru, Jeff Phoebus, is with us as well. Um, a big show tonight, so I'm really excited about it, Ryan. Uh, this first segment is brought to you by Meyer. meyer has been a proud sponsor of Calvin Athletics since 2012. Ryan, off the top, how you doing? I'll tell you what, Jim, I'm great. I, everything else seems to be shutting down around us. <laughs> you know, a lot of you be listening to this on tape delay, kind of like the NBA in the 80s. Yeah. You know, we're getting one hit after another here, but the round table just keeps on ticking. Here we are, episode four. Great show tonight, and I'll tell you what, I'm fired up to be here. I'm fired up to head into Thanksgiving break. Well, that's great. I, I know Ryan Ryan uh, is kind of t- uh, torn. His Bears are playing as we tape this, but I think uh, we'll get through with this, and he'll catch the second half uh, with the Bears versus the Vikings and a key NFC Central matchup. Really, yeah, I just will say this, Jim. It's it's a pretty big battle tonight. You know, really uh, is going to set the tone for who's going to have the better draft pick, really. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping we lose. You know, I was talking with Coach Hilgert about that today, uh, Vikings fan. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we'll see how this one plays out tonight. Well, I hope we have a lot of fun at tonight's show. I, uh, but we're going to start off a little serious, a little more serious note. It, and uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll progress into some of the fun stuff. And uh, we started out this um, about eight weeks ago on our very first show talking about what's life like on campus. And and certainly we had a in many ways a successful fall. Um, and you know right now uh, I, the uh, the news on campus, of course, was that the uh, state of Michigan shut down all in person learning. Our goal at Calvin University was to get us to. Um, uh, the day before, two days before Thanksgiving, and then go online. So we came up five days short of our goal, um, a valiant effort by everybody, everybody on campus. But um, in a more serious note, yeah, this, the COVID is, COVID is surging. Um, and, you know, we, we came on four, eight weeks ago saying, hey, morale's pretty good. How, how do you feel like it is right now, Ryan, on campus? You know, I think it's it's both and, you know, there's some people that are obviously disappointed, you know, I think uh, to your point, maybe coming a couple of days short of our initial goal is disappointing, but, but I'll say this to Calvin's credit, we didn't shut us down. You know, the state yeah. of Michigan did. And so a huge, a huge credit to all of the people, uh, you know, in student life and, and Calvin administration, I, I would say, you know, to the best of our abilities collectively, we, we crossed the finish line. You know, I think um, from an academic standpoint, that's where you, you, you get some positive notes. Obviously, from an athletic standpoint, it, it's disappointing. You know, I'm, I'm walking around the building today. We're, we're still doing some of our exit interviews. And, you know, you look and interact with some of our winter sport athletes and, and they're pretty disappointed. Right. They feel yeah. like this was kind of kind of taken from them. And, and so I think that that's a little tough. Um, my hope is, um, you know, institutionally, athletically, and, and even as a state that this is just a pause. Cause I mean, I really believe athletics, you know, you look around the state, I've seen more rallying around local athletics than, than maybe ever before. Cause it's yeah. kind of what you had. And, and I feel like even at Calvin, it was a, it, it was kind of an accountability measure. You know, I think our fall sport athletes and, and even our winter sport athletes to a large degree up to this point have been great. You know, have been healthy, have been making wise choices, have been uh, COVID free, all, all those kinds of things. So, you know, a lot of uh, thoughts uh, rolled in there. I know we usually like to have a laugh uh, to open the show, but um, I don't know. I think we're going to come back strong hopefully a little pause here and we come back better than than we were even before your thoughts yeah. i'm not sure what your feeling is as an ad yeah you know I, take my take away the hat of a host of round table and put it back as ad um it was tough friday was a tough day uh writing that email um for those who do who don't know we we paused athletics um we for for all our teams in season out of season and basically we're, we shut it down for two weeks and then sunday night of course, the state of Michigan uh, kind of did the same thing, and and but I didn't know they were going to do that, and so that that weighed really heavily on me on on Friday um, because I I see the athletes, I see what they put into it, but in many ways, um, you know, we talked to the athletes way back before we started about a very tough opponent, and if you want to bring it back to that sport analogy, COVID's tough. I like to say we're at halftime right now. 
and we had a good start. Maybe reminds me of uh, Calvin Soccer when uh, I said to you, "Boy, I, I I don't know if we're going to make it through the second and half." And we came back and won in in uh, OT um, on a golden goal. So yeah, we've been taking our punches this first semester. I'm hoping it's halftime. I'm hoping we're going to get some reinforcements, maybe with with some type of vaccine, some better therapeutics. Maybe the surge goes away. Always the optimist, but. Uh, I, I hope for all our student athletes and for all the people listening, all those Calvin Knight fans, we're going to try to get something on the field, on the courts, in the arenas, on the ice rink here in second semester. So um, I'll, I'll tell you this, Jim, it's funny. You mentioned like the first half and, and I'm drawn to, I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, there's that interview with a high school football player. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. They had us in the first half pretty good <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, I feel like that could be us, you know, like yeah. the old second half of the year here, hopefully some things turn around nationally. Um, I, I think our athletes, you know, everyone's looking forward to a second semester of play, which we've never had. You know, yeah. fall athletes are looking to have, uh, you know, a, a spring season, um, you know, obviously winter and spring sports as well. So I think a lot, a lot to be excited about, certainly. Right. So uh, we're going to have fun the rest of the show. I see some of our guests rolling their eyes. They're sick of having COVID talk. And certainly if my my wife and my uh, family members were down here, they'd say, Dad, that's all you talk about. So we're going to move on from that, sort of. So topic number two, and that's our last topic off the top, Ryan. This will be our last show before Thanksgiving. You mentioned it off the top. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. It will be different, I think, for a lot of families across the country. But I like to play this little game, Thanksgiving dinner. And here's my deal. You get two and I get two. Um, we'll go alternating picks. Four people, I get two, you get two, that we are going to invite to Thanksgiving dinner year 2020. It has to be a live person, and it has to be relative to sport. So you go first. Who do you want to invite to our Thanksgiving dinner? Just to chat. <laughs> Now, you remember, we're not talking politics or religion at the dinner table. So it's it's sport related. Who are we talking to? I'm bringing the goat. I'm bringing MJ to Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm asking about the last dance. I want even more coverage than what the last dance was offering. I want all the dirt on why he's better than LeBron. I, I mean, that's just I, – I mean, plus it, it fulfills like – a dream as you know, eight year old Ryan. That, I mean, I'm bringing the goat, man. Like, it's, okay. I, I had no doubt. Okay, so you're bringing the goat. Are you going to allow him to smoke the cigar in your in your living room? Is my wife one of the four people that will be at the Thanksgiving <laughs> <dinner> table? <laughs> Unless you're, I will. We don't want to get traditional roles, but I'm assuming she's cooking. Uh, you will know, we'll both be, we're not really. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I would say, go ahead. Right. It's, it's right. Mike. Just whatever. Right. Mike wants. So here's my pick. And Jeff Feebles will like this. Alan Trammell. Boyhood idol. Hall of Famer, Detroit Tigers. I, I just want to talk to him about the fine art of shortstop. Not about managing. He lost 119 games with the Tigers. It was a tough summer, but I, I got to have Alan Trammell. And I want to know if he remembers handing a little boy a bat in Lakeland, Florida in 1982 or something like that when I was 12 or 13. I, I forget. So that's my – for who's your next pick? Well, Jim, before you go on, uh, um, assuming you were that that young boy, I'll save you one of your picks and say he probably doesn't remember. <laughs> okay. so that's kind of a wasted pick if that's all you were going to ask him, just to be honest with you. Man, my second – my second – you know, I'm going to go entertainment value, and there's probably very few people who who would get this. Although I might get a laugh out of the Phoebe Cave, I think I would bring Zlatan uh, to the to the Thanksgiving dinner table. I just think, you know, that guy. He's a character. You know, he's uh, made famous for um, speaking of himself in third person, himself yeah. as a, a lion, all these kind of things. I think, you know, it'd be a I don't think it'd be as calm as your Thanksgiving uh, dinner table, but man, we'd get, we'd get some laughs. When do you cross over into a one word person like Madonna or Prince or, or the symbol of Prince or Mike? I don't know. I don't have it crossed that barrier yet. All right. Are I'm you kidding me? We've got him on this show. It's yeah. Phoebus. It is. We won Phoebus. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> My kids once asked me, what's a Phoebus? You know, because on my phone, <laughs> Phoebus always came up. Um, all right, my fourth one, and this is again, we're getting a little. I, I'm going to bring Mark Emmerich from the NCAA. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because my man Ryan. Bringing him in to throw him out of your house? No, because I figure you're going to be there and you're going to hit him with a, what are we doing here? And I want to hear his answers and I want to ask him, come on, are we going to have sports second semester? Are we going to have the NCAA tournament in one city? And if in one city, why Indianapolis? (laughs) I mean, come on. There's a lot of nothing against Indianapolis, all you folks out there. All right. Hey, guys, well, Jim, I, I got, before we transition, I got one question for you. I'm curious. I'm sure the home audience would like to know. Yeah. One item from the Timmer Thanksgiving table. Traditionally, I, you know, I don't know what your extended, if there's any extended family plans this year with respect to COVID, but yeah. the one item, maybe it's maybe it's your your families, your in-laws, your, your wife, whatever, that you're like, that is the item I show up for on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, so this is a late a late bloomer. Last year, my wife made this macaroni and cheese dish that I would have every day, but she made it for Thanksgiving. And you don't think that's traditional Thanksgiving. It's not craft macaroni and cheese like our student athletes make in their off-campus apartments. This is like real cheese, macaroni and cheese. It really went, it was really uh, a compliment to the rest of the tastes that were there. And I like them all. I like apple pie too. That's my 1A. How about you? So I got to be honest, the, the Souders family's kind of moved away from traditional Thanksgiving food. We, I mean, we like, we have ribeye steaks on oh. Thanksgiving day. Like, I got, <laughs> like food we're really thankful for and that we want to eat. So, I mean, yeah. a good, a good, you know, we've done like a smoked turkey, all that stuff. But yeah, I don't, that's, that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to start talking about Calvin Athletics. Uh, Ryan, fun to catch up with you. Um, the uh, the on campus update, and then our our Thanksgiving uh, dinner with our boyhood uh, idols and a few other special guests. Um, our next segment is our five minutes with Phoebus. Uh, it's brought to you by In On Time, matching your requirements and your needs for our fleet and warehouses gives you the flexibility you're looking for in a logistics provider. Unmatched service and reliability makes In On Time your complete logistics solution. Um, I ask Jeff each week or every uh, bi-weekly to a little topic for five minutes. Uh, Ryan and I usually react to it. So this this week's topic, I'll let Jeff, you go ahead and introduce it. My, I would say this. This is about the time of year where we're getting our All-American postseason awards for our fall athletes, whether it's All-League or All-American, All-Region. We don't have it this year. So I asked Jeff to kind of do a take on that. Jeff. Well, I think uh, the way we're going to work it here is I'm going to come up with a fall sport. And I think, Jim, you wanted to try to at least give out a guess. Then I'll give the correct answer, maybe a little bit of a snippet of information behind the individuals. But we're trying to come up with the first All-American or All-Americans in the respective uh, fall sport at Kelvin. And yeah. I've got one little bonus um, section on there, too. So yeah. we'll throw that in at the end. And Ryan can help out too. For those of you who have never been to Venord Arena or, or haven't been down by the All-American Wall, boy, you walk by that every day if you're an athlete. I look at those names each and every day. I'm going to see if I can guess the first All-Americans in those sports. So, Jeff, let's go. All right. Well, let's just start it out with men's soccer. Uh, who was the first All-American in Calvin men's soccer history? Yeah, I, I think know you know the one. answer. Yeah. Jim, you got it? It's got to be Casey Tahar. 100%. It is got to be. Yeah. It is Casey Terrar, 1962, the first great goalkeeper, one of many in Kelvin men's soccer history. He had the distinction of playing under the first three uh, Kelvin head men's soccer coaches. We had uh, Raul Biker, Tony Brower. I think they were both uh, Kelvin faculty members, apart from the athletic department, physical education department. And then, of course, Dr. Marv Zitema, he wasn't quite Dr. Z then. He got his Ph.D. around 1969 or so, but he came on in 1961 and coached Casey. And, uh, of course, Casey was one of those um, Dutch immigrants that came over from the Netherlands in the 1950s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, one of these days, uh, I was going to write a story on Casey about four or five years ago. Uh, and just he's got an amazing life story. Maybe we can have him on as a guest. But um, as a young child, he was in a uh, Japanese um, internment camp in uh, what was then uh, Dutch Indochina. And his father was part of the Dutch government, uh, was in a separate um, um, 
kind of a prisoner of war camp. And actually the first time Casey remember seeing his father was at the gates of that camp that he was at wow. when they were both released. I mean, obviously his father had seen him as a baby, but then they were separated when they were about a year old. So, you know, you Casey hear a lot of those, you, you hear a lot of those life stories, you know, that go back to the Netherlands and uh, he he's definitely one of them. So, yeah. He All also right. has the distinction of um, putting his pop-up chair in the exact same location <laughs> For yeah. every single men's and women's home soccer matches, uh, guys, it's unbelievable. He's, he's there every game, rain, snow, shine, whatever. All right, next one. Okay, uh, well, let's just stick with soccer, uh, women's soccer. All right, this I was there when women's soccer became a official varsity sport, but we had success. Um, it's got to be Tara, Tara, Dyke. Be my guest assistant coach, Tara. Tara Dyke, Mike she's Wagner. one of two in that same year. Was her sister the other one? No, it, Tara Dyke and Amber Wiersma back in 1997. Okay. And uh, Tara, of course, was uh, the high-scoring forward. I think she had 35 goals and 10 assists back in 1997 when we won Maria, the league. I'm going to ask Maria if she's yeah. got 35 goals yet. She and does uh, she yeah, does <laughs> and, and Amber was more of a holding midfielder, um, sometimes played back on the defensive back line. But, uh, yeah, we ended up hosting her. A regional made it to the uh, round of 16 and lost to Washington University of St. Louis three to two in that uh, round of 16. That tournament was kind of um, set up a little differently back then too. There was like a first round play in game. We actually got a first round buy and then we hosted a pot of four. So we actually were technically into the third round of the NCAA tournament. But that was that was a fun year. And she's done a great job contributing to back to the program, Tara. You bet. And, you bet. All right, next sport. Uh, all right. Women's cross country. Um, oh, this, this could be a tough one. It's just one individual and I'll give you a hint. It, uh, is our, um, only individual national champion in, uh, Kelvin men's or women's cross country history. Uh, Haver camp. No, this would be Renee blue camp, 1991. Oh, I uh, camp. Yeah, I, yeah, she was yeah. fifth at the national meet 1991 and um, helped us finish eighth as a team. Uh, she was out of uh, Holland West Ottawa high school. In fact, was a basketball player. And of course you might remember that basketball for several years here in the state of Michigan was played in the fall. So she made the transition in high school, uh, basketball to the cross country um, course and really just came on like gangbusters and uh, her junior year at the national meet earned her second all America um, birth. And not only, did that but won a national title that was in Grinnell Iowa and uh, that was the first of three straight second place national runners-up finish spots for the Kelvin women's cross-country team so Renee Blue Camp. all right men's it's got it Dikama it is not no this Dang. is a fun one I had to look this one up are you I, even I playing Jim I, I, I'm terrible yeah I'm I a think tough night I think Ryan will like some of the fun facts on this. So you have to go all the way back to 1960. It was Barry, Barry Coops out of Rehoboth Christian in New Mexico. Uh, he had a relation. I think it was his grandson, Sawyer Coops, who ran for us about eight, nine, ten years ago. And um, Are you Sawyer, going to ready to add the soccer player now? Coops? No, Coops. Yeah, so, yeah, so Sawyer Coops, um, I believe, is his grandson, and he's married to Lauren the former Lauren Bergstrom, who we had talked about. Um, well, maybe we haven't talked about it on this program. Might have been a throwback Thursday spot that I did, but she was a soccer cross country track. She did everything. So, anyway, that's a lot of Kelvin connection. But Barry Coops out of Rehoboth, and then Jim Dubai, who was out of Grand Rapids Christian High School. And they were part of the first three MIAA championship men's cross country teams. So it was 58, 59, and 60. And then they go to the national meet the first time that a Kelvin cross country team did that. And Ryan will get a kick out of this. The small college championships in 1960 were in Wheaton, Illinois at the Chicago country club. I did not know that the Chicago country club was in Wheaton, Illinois. Is had I, had I been alive, I would have gone. It was about <laughs> you know a mile and a half from where I grew up. So yeah. Yeah, definitely interesting fact there. So, All right. Yeah. got to keep, keep going. Got two more real quick. All right. Well, uh, we got volleyball. volleyball. It's got to be Amber, and if not, change the records, right? Yeah. <laughs> Amber Amber was close, but it had to be one of her teammates, uh, Dykstra, Kelsbeek. Yeah. Um, 
there was another outside hitter. It was Julie there. Dykstra uh, okay. in the 85 season in the next year. Uh, Julie Dykstra, Roxanne Helmus, and Leah Kelsbeek did it all together. Uh, so there you have it. Men's golf, uh, we actually were talking about this going in. You know yep. the answer to this one. Yeah, Ben Vinskoyk. To, and one more quick bonus one I just want to throw in there. The MIAA for a number of years before women's soccer was around had field hockey, and we do have two field hockey All-Americans. I'll give you a hint. You probably know them, Jim, or at least knew them, sisters, uh, late 1980s, 90 or so. Oh, I was going to guess Brookhuisen, Renee Brook, or Brookhuisen's mom, but that wasn't it. Um, come on. Kath. Kath, Kathleen. Kathleen Brookhuisen, but she wasn't Brookhuisen then. Who, no, who was we had it? Leslie and Kim Tannis. Oh, Tannis. Yep. I know Leslie. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Leslie, if you're if you actually listening. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Jeff. I, I appreciate that. So I'm gonna we're gonna turn it over to you with our guest. He's been waiting patiently in the green room. Um, and uh, take it away with our coach interview. All right. All right. Well, our uh, coach interview tonight is with Calvin women's basketball coach Mark Christner. And this interview is brought to you once again by Vredevog Heating and Cooling. Vredevog Heating and Cooling has served West Michigan for 54 years. They are a leading heating and cooling contractor and the best choice for your home. They install quality systems and back them up with guarantees to protect your investment. Content and cooling today for a free estimate at www.vredevog.com. Well, as I mentioned, we are joined by uh, Kelvin, now second-year head women's basketball coach, Mark Christner, who is back in West Michigan. He is no stranger to West Michigan, grew up in Big Rapids, and matriculated uh, his way down US 131 to the Kelvin campus in uh, the mid-1990s, where he was a uh, member of the Kelvin men's basketball program uh, for, well, as a player for three years. And then uh, your senior year, um, you were a student assistant coach. And then you were around um, for, you were doing your student teaching in mm -hmm. the fall of 1998-99. And that whole year, 99-2000, that began a string of three years with the Kelvin women's basketball program as a uh, coach. And uh, then in 2002, uh, the 02-03 year, uh, you began, let's see, eight years with the Kelvin men's uh, basketball program as an assistant uh, you were the junior varsity men's basketball coach for a number of years, uh, picked up your master's along the way at Western Michigan University. Of course, the undergrad was at Kelvin, a uh, history major after my own heart. We love <laughs> history there, physical education minor. And uh, yeah, after eight years at Kelvin, um, ended up getting uh, your first head coaching gig, went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, became the head men's basketball coach at Waynesburg. You were there for nine years and uh, well, it was uh, almost a couple of springs ago now that uh, you came back to the Kelvin campus and uh, became our new head women's basketball coach. And uh, in your first year, uh, led the Knights to a 17-10 and 10 record. And uh, not only was great to have you back, Mark, but uh, great to have uh, your wife, Sarah, who's a Kelvin uh, softball and women's basketball alumna. And, of course, uh, your uh, your son and your two daughters, Uh I guess the first question is, what's it like to be back in West Michigan here? You've had a year pretty much to settle back in. Um, just your thoughts on all of that. You know, Jeff, it, it's been great. I think one of the things that we talked about as a family was when you move and you do something a little different, um, and, and a lot of coaches have an opportunity to either coach at their alma mater or go away and then maybe come back or who knows, like once you get started in the coaching profession, you can end up going a lot of different ways. I think for us, the opportunity for me in particular to come back and do something, and we, we've kind of said it's similar yet really different um, to jump genders and to go back to the women's game, kind of where I got my start has been has been really unique. It's been fun to be closer to family. Uh, our kids love where we live and the school has been a wonderful thing for our kids. Our son is in freshman in high school. And, and if I was able to coach during the women's week, they had a week of women in a week of men's, you know, you end up coaching about 24 regulation high school games in the summer. And uh, to be honest, it was really fun. And you're playing and you're having really good teams. I don't have to, <laughs> you don't recruit, you just get a team of uh, eight or nine people. When you get there, they're all pretty good. And uh, it's your job to work with them and to coach them throughout the week, uh, kind of in a, in a 
preliminary event to an AAU tournament now, I think. So I think those years especially were really formative for me in terms of uh, wanting to stick with it. And uh, Coach Gall, who was my first coach that I worked with at Calvin, was a terrific uh, supporter and encourager for me. Uh, and then Coach Van Street continued to do so when I transitioned to the men's side. So, you know, it was one of those things kind of once you got into it and you heard some affirmation um, and the competitive aspect of, of being at Calvin where you competed at a high level is, uh, yeah, it was it was very much magnetic. And, uh, and then you had the opportunity to go have your own program, which was really, really fun too. So, yeah, you mentioned that, uh, your own program, uh, at Waynesburg for nine years and you were coaching men, you had been coaching men for a number of years at that point. So what led you to, um, pursue the Calvin job and, uh, to take a little bit of a different turn, not a big one, but a little bit of a turn, to uh, coach the women's side rather than the men's side? Uh, what led you back and uh, what led you to pursue that that spot? You know, I think, Jeff, it was in many ways uh, something that the Lord put on our heart. Um, I know we hear that term a lot in, in professional decision-making or vocation uh, choosing. I, I do think it wasn't something that was initially on our radar. In fact, I'll tell you a story. My wife might get a little mad at me, but we were driving to... Uh, Garrett County in Southern Maryland, um, just in the Western part of Maryland, about an hour and a half from Waynesburg on a recruiting trip. And I had, and Coach Vanistreek had talked to me just a little bit about the women's scenario uh, at Calvin. Uh, and it was uh, the end of middle of, uh, end of January, maybe early February. Um, and we're on this trip and it's a beautiful, it's, it's beautiful country, uh, Southwestern PA and into Western Maryland. Uh, you're kind of rolling through the hills a little bit. And I mentioned something to Sarah about the Calvin job and what she thought of. And her first response was, well, you don't coach women. So <laughs> that was kind of that, you know, but I think, and I say that from a standpoint, it was, it was really in many ways out of left field. And I think for us, um, the pull to come back to Calvin, the pull to be, um, a part of something where you could compete at a very high level. I think as a coach, I always had a aspirations of coaching somewhere where you felt like you could win a national championship. And I feel like you can do that on the women's side at Calvin. Um, and I think talking with people, um, you know, certainly have colleagues in the department. Um, I think I was ready for something new professionally. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, it's so similar in many ways, and yet it's really different. And uh, I think that was super attractive. And to be able to coach at your alma mater, there's not a, there's not many things better. Although I'll save the Harbaugh talk, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there's not a lot, there's not a lot better uh, than to be able to coach at your alma mater. And I think for for us to come back and, and be a little full circle, you know, it's where I got my start. Uh, my first, uh, you know, one of my first endearing and searing images, Jeff, is our uh, is our second round game. Uh, in 2000 with the women's team at Capitol. And uh, Mindy hit a three, you know, to put us ahead late. Um, and we held uh, Coach Jeffers, who's, who's you know, kind of a legend on the women's side in, in the D3 world. And, uh, you know, we ended up going to Wash U and losing to, to Baldwin Wallace in double overtime and a fantastic game. But, um, you know, for me, that's kind of where I cut my chops a little bit initially. And I think to come back um, and have an opportunity to coach at a high level, um, our league is fantastic in which we coach in. There, there are wonderful coaches in our league from a X and O standpoint, and it's it's high level recruiting, it's high level X and O, um, and, and you know I think the opportunity to kind of get this program back to where we feel like it should be, um, yeah, it was a great great opportunity and one that I'm entirely thankful for. So let's talk just quickly a little bit about your team. Um, you were 17 and 10 a year ago, took fourth in a very competitive league. You made it to the MIAA tournament semifinals. You returned the bulk of that team for this year. We're not really sure what this year is going to actually entail. You have had uh, a couple of um, practices, um, you know, throughout the fall. So you've had a little bit of a look what can you say about this group um, without, you know, really like looking at what the schedule might look like? Because right now, none of us really look, sure. uh, really know what the schedule is going to look like. But what can you say about this group, this team? You know, we had uh, 23 
practices in the fall, I think, Jeff. Um, you know, we return 75% of our scoring and maybe 79% of our minutes, um, something of that nature. Um, I, I'm proud of our, the commitment at level of our group. Um, you know, most of the, of the players on our roster uh, were here and, you know, the ability for us to connect with them, coach the clients, my assistant does a fantastic job. Um, you know, I think for us, the commitment level of kind of staying and, and choosing to continue to be part of it, continuing to get better. Uh, it was fun to see some strides from some of our players in the fall. Uh, you could tell that they really worked on our game, especially our sophomore group uh, really had great strides. Uh, so Leah Harris, Sydney Cleary, Sarah Neely, Ali Shearer uh, all made, and you could see it. It was pretty evident in practice. Great, great strides. Group returning as well. Um, and, and I would say two seniors who, who are committed program, uh, people and uh, people who are going to work hard. They're going to communicate openly and honestly, and uh, really thankful for for both of them. So, you know, I think we were pretty excited about what we had coming back and what we had seen a little bit. You know, we got to about practice 18 or 19, and you're ready to play somebody. <laughs> and we know that we weren't able to do that, but uh, we left practice a few of those days thinking, yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, like everybody else, we're just in a holding pattern, but I, I, I'm optimistic that uh, that our group will continue to choose to be a little bit uncommon and uh, continue to work and uh, continue to believe, and, and, and we'll see what happens. All right, very good. Well, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what happens uh, with your program down the road, and uh, we're really grateful that you're back here uh, on the Calvin campus and leading the Calvin women's basketball program. So, uh, Mark, thanks for stopping by. And uh, being a part of this Breda Vogue heating and cooling coach interview. We're back with segment number four, and that is our student athlete interviews brought to you like by Lake Michigan Credit Union. Lake Michigan Credit Union has more ways for your money to earn even more. Choose CDs, house savings accounts, nationally recognized credit cards and checking account. Money Magazine called it the best checking account in America. Earn more interest, more returns, and more rewards with Lake Michigan Credit Union. We're going to have two student-athlete interviews, uh, both from our soccer programs who completed their fall portion of their uh, season uh, just this, uh, maybe two weeks ago. Um, our first one is senior Drew Venando. And uh, Drew, welcome to the roundtable. Thank you for having me. Well, it's been kind of a strange fall for you, and and uh, I know you didn't know a lot what to expect when you when you came back um, there. But tell me a little bit, how would you feel the fall went for, for you personally and for Calvin men's soccer? Yeah, I thought it was, all things considered, about as good as it can be. Okay. Um, for me personally, um, part of why I chose to, come to Calvin was um, because I felt there was an aspect of, um, you know, love for the love for the game instead of um, necessarily, you know, obviously there's a c competitive aspect to it, but, you know, you're, you come to Calvin to play the game that you love. Um, and that's what I felt when I visited people. Um, and I felt like this fall was kind of a good, I guess, testament to that, you know, we, we weren't given the competitive opportunities that we have had, um, in years past, but we made the most of it and we had as much fun as we could have, um, because we love to play the game of soccer, um, and not, you know, we weren't, I, I personally wasn't too, um, I guess, distraught for not playing, uh, against other teams. Obviously we would have loved to play against other teams, but, Still having that opportunity to get out, play with the guys, kind of build those part, uh, those relationships uh, and those friendships um, was incredible. Uh, so I think uh, personally, you know, it was I I I'm, I guess I was just making making the most of it. I kind of came to terms with uh, what the pandemic meant for me over the summer um, okay. in terms of my uh, career, um, but um, the. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, for the team, I felt like, you know, we, we were able to get a lot of guys, good touches, a lot of guys that, you know, historically probably 
may not have gotten as many touches in the fall. Uh, we got a lot of good uh, scrimmage minutes um, in our inner squad scrimmages that happened every weekend. Um, and so I think that really benefited the team as a whole. Um, we were able to just kind of, yeah, get guys more touches and, um, you know, awesome. like I said, make the most of it. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I was at quite a few of those, the scrimmages on the weekend. One of the things I was kind of shocked at, and I, I shouldn't have been shocked. I'm getting older was how hard you guys played against each other. Do you think that was a little harder than maybe you play against each other in practice? Cause you had the lights on and the uniforms and the people were there, or do you guys go at each other that hard? Uh, it probably was enhanced, uh, because of a crowd, because of the lights, because you're playing on the game field. Um, but we do, we, I mean, we do go pretty hard in practice. Um, you know, not a lot of people really see us practice. We're kind of tucked away down in that lower field. Um, but we are pretty competitive. We really, we really do get into it. You know, there are scrums and, um, you kind of, you know, you'll get into it with a few of your uh, teammates, but um, coach does a good job of kind of making sure that everybody knows that once you once you leave the field, you're yeah you're uh, you're all on the same team. So he he's a great center official too. I I found that out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would just fit. <laughs> remember he's still got playing time in the in the yeah, spring. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll give you some easier questions. These are a little bit shorter, and then we'll get on because I know you're busy studying here at the end of the semester. Um, you were a basketball player. I was. Grand Haven. Tell me, what was your best offensive move? Um, Jump shot? Were you a low post player? No, no, yeah, yeah. So I was uh, – oh, fun fact about me. I actually I actually lead Grand Haven um, all-time – I'm the all-time record holder in field goal percentage in a single season. Oh wow! Um, so my all-time, my best offensive move was get the rebound and take a two-foot layup. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that, so that's, I mean, well, I, you need you need a hundred you needed a hundred shots minimum, and I took a hundred and eight, and eighty of them were within the paint. So, well, I tell you what, we had Coach Chris is still around. He'll tell you an offensive rebound and a putback is a wonderful offensive move. Grand Haven Buccaneers out there on the uh, west coast of Michigan. Um, hey, this is a question that that Coach Souders wants. He likes to ask, and I'm going to steal this from Coach Souders. Best soccer player you played against or were on the field with? So it can be a teammate, somebody you played against. It can't be – you can't tell me Messi, but yep. best player that you've had to defend or on your team or – that's that a good kid question. From Amherst was pretty good. Yeah, I've played with some pretty good ones here at Calvin. Oh um, yeah. Oh, that is a good question. I know you I don't think, want to put anybody out, but yeah. Well, so so Iski Van Dorn came back and played, and uh, he came back and played like in the spring or something when we had, um, I don't know, we, we, it was like a Saturday or whatever. I think coach wasn't there and we were playing and he came back and played and, uh, he was very good. Uh, <laughs> but oh, oh, and man. like, I mean, yeah, I don't want to like, I know I can, see I don't want to like, I don't want, I don't, I don't know if he sees this. I don't really want to boost his ego, but <laughs> he's, he was probably, he's probably the best player I've played with. Played All against. Right. Um, you ever thought about getting into coaching? I have not. No, I haven't. Um, I'm not going to discount that option, okay. though. Um, but, yeah, no, I haven't. I uh, It's just never really crossed my mind. All right. Before we go to uh, the 24 uh, second shot clock questions, how about this one? What would a, what would a freshman Drew Venando or a senior Drew Venando – Tell a freshman, Drew Vanandel, now that you've been through it. Mm. And freshman it could be Drew. it could be school or whatever. So what would the senior okay. say to the freshman? Oh, man. Freshman Drew was so bad at soccer. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> like, so, like, so bad. Um, you just so, say, hang in there, you'll get yeah, better? Yeah, something, something along those lines. Like, uh, like, <laughs> like, keep your head up, you're a good player, or something. <laughs> some, I don't know. Something encouraging that just kind of isn't too well, too demeaning, but also well, just, yeah. I'll tell you this. The Calvin University and Calvin Soccer has done a good job for you to to have that mature approach and look back and say, wow, what I – because when you're a freshman, you don't know what you don't know, right? Oh, yeah. No, no, right. Yeah. I did not know what I was stepping into. So, all right. So we now we go to the final segment, and then you're done. It's 24 seconds, seven questions, um, and here you go. You ready? Yep. One or two word answers. Favorite color. Start out easy. Blue. Blue. All right. Blue. Um, favorite musical artist. Um, oh, uh, the Abbott Brothers. I never heard of them. Okay. No, Professional favorite professional sports team, Crystal Palace. Oh, wow, that that's I did not know. Look, Phoebus doesn't like that one. How about this one? Go Eagles. Do you remember what it was your dorm room freshman year? Yeah, third boar. What was your what was the number? Uh, 323. 323 boar. Yep, I, I was applied a, both years. Oh, awesome. Who's the loudest teammate? Uh, Chris Morris. Oh, boy, yeah, sure enough. He's yelling at you guys all the time. Favorite fast food? Chick-fil-A. Last question. You're wearing the Cubs hat for more playing time. Okay. Um, right. No. Or or do you actually like the Cubs? Uh, my brother is named after Ryan Sandberg. Oh, wow. You guys yeah. are Cubs fans. Hey, Drew, I want to thank you. You hung in there. It was a long night. Um, yeah, no and we really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. And good luck in the spring. We'll, we'll be watching. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. For a special uh, uh, treat tonight, we have our second and final segment, and we don't have to read the Lake Michigan Credit Union uh, read again, but Coach Souders is going to interview a women's soccer player, and I'll let Coach Souders uh, take it away from here. Thanks, Jim. So tonight we're joined by senior midfielder Maria Vanderlei. Maria, how are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm great. Thanks. Thanks so much for being with us on the round table. Now, first thing I got to ask you before we get into maybe more, um, you know, I've watched a fair amount of uh, Calvin women's soccer games live. You know, I watch them on the live stream. Just let the record show. Can I get a last name pronunciation for the audience, please? Hi. Vander Lye, not Vander Lee, not Vander Lee, I just Vander Lee. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure so we can get that moving forward. I've heard from pronunciation, so I just wanted to make sure. So, next question for you. So you're a senior at Calvin. Um, obviously, uh, this fall was very different. Take take us through. You know, Drew talked a little bit. Uh, uh, kind of that that the fall was a decent experience. How was you with soccer specifically? different uh this fall what you guys were doing day to day versus what you've done in the past yeah I think that for us one of the, like the big times that we can really get to know each other as a team was preseason so not having that was pretty difficult it helps kind of just move into you know play together and getting to know each other more specifically and so with all these COVID restrictions I think it was hard to not be able to hang out as much and we spent a lot of time in the locker room and obviously we weren't allowed to do that so I think uh, being intentional about hanging out was something that was different and, and as turn or as uh, those with playing um, this year was different because we had a lot of new incomers so our team was a lot bigger which was super fun we were able to compete against each other and yeah it was just it was great and honestly like we weren't allowed to play against other teams, but we were able to play against each other and we wouldn't have been able to do that last year. So this fall was pretty fun. Yeah. Cool. One of, one of the other great things, um, you know, as a byproduct of that is, um, you know, athletes not using uh, a year of eligibility with the NCAA's blanket waiver. So I'm not going to ask you, but I'm just might encourage you to, to remind you that you do 
still have a year of eligibility. So um, go ahead and compete this spring, you know, maybe win the league. And then would I mean, I'm sure Coach Ottenhoff, myself, other fans that now know how to pronounce your name would love to maybe see you as a fifth year uh, next fall. So just just my two cents. Um, so next, obviously, you've been at Calvin for four years. Talk about about that holistic experience, right? What was it like? Um, you're a Grand Rapids Christian Eagle. I know sometimes you hear a lot of like, oh, you, you know, you're just going up the road to Calvin. Is that something that was kind of always assumed, something you were excited about? Kind of talk about your, your recruiting process and then really your soccer experience over the last now three and a half years. Yeah, so uh, my mom works at Calvin and has worked at Calvin for my whole life. So, and I went to Grand Rapids Christian. So it's kind of, assume that I was going to Calvin and I think that most faculty kids go through this but I went through a phase of I'm never going to Calvin I'm not just going to go in that path and um, but then I visited Calvin and I looked more into the kinesiology department and their pre physical therapy program and I really realized that it was a really good fit for me and then on top of that, that was just icing on the cake so yeah Awesome. And talk about what it's been like uh, playing for Coach Otten. This is, what, year three with Coach and just, um, you know, working under her. I think, you know, you're a captain this year. Talk about kind of moving from being a sophomore in her first year and kind of as the program culture has changed and, and now into, uh, getting to be a, a student leader for that culture. Yeah. So um, when Emily came in, we were all like super excited because you could tell how much she cared about this program and how much she wants this program to grow and be the best place to play soccer. And um, yeah, we all love her. She's so fun to be around. She really pushes us to be better players and people. And yeah, we're super thankful for her and all the hard work that she does for this program. Cool. So moving along, next question. I've kind of been wondering this. So for those of you who, you know, maybe walk in into uh, the Spoolhoff Fieldhouse Complex, you'll walk down what is, uh, you know, we call Main Street. There's some tables out there, Nightway Cafe, all that stuff. And you'll notice that this fall, there's some brand new student athlete banners. Um, and what you'll see about the third, fourth banner in, I, I took a second look for research today, you will see Maria Vanderlei. So Maria, I'm curious, uh, did you choose that picture? You know, what was going through your head? Um, you know, do you like that picture? Are you going to hang that banner, you know, in your room someday or like your kids' rooms to remind them like how how good you were? Or take take me through that process. You know, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I personally had no idea that I was going to be put on a banner. I found out as it was being put up, Coach Ottenhoff sent me a picture of it. Um, I did not choose that picture, but I've been known to not have a good straight face. And so my teammates make fun of me. So when that picture was put up, I was a little shocked, but yeah. Is, is that one of those things like, um, like coaches in film, like people tell you like, Hey, this is how you look. And you're like, no, I don't, I don't. And now it's like immortalized. Like you have to see it every time you walk in and your teammates can remind you of it. Yeah. Yep. Huh? <laughs> All right, good deal. So next, next question here. Um, Fa what, what's been your favorite class you've had at Calvin? Like maybe best or favorite class, you know, in, in your three and a half years? I think the kinesiology class that I'm in now, 328, is probably one of my favorites. We're paired with a client and we actually work through an exercise program with them. So having hands-on experience has been really cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool in terms of getting experience. No, no interim classes stood out there in terms of your like experientially maybe your best or favorite classes the trip that i went on with you yeah that was, it was a good fun. it was a good trip yeah. oh yeah the one that amber uh dr warners and i taught yeah thanks for that little throw in at the end um last question for you here so if if i'm correct i believe you also had a sibling that was a student athlete at calvin is that correct yeah would you like to detail that at all <laughs> <laughs> my older brother Andrew he was a swimmer here for four years okay sounds good and he if I'm correct has is recently been married to another uh Calvin yeah. swimmer alum is that correct yes Adrian Vesalius excellent yeah good we hey coaches we love that next gen you know I, I'll take the kid who you know in, is a Grand Rapids Christian Eagle that's disgrunt, disgruntled with Calvin their freshman sophomore and first semester uh, semester you know senior year 
as long as they end up coming and competing for us, that's that's definitely what matters. Um, last thing here, just for good of the group, you know, I don't know if I'm spoiling Dr. Timmer's uh, 24-7, but if you only had to support one professional sports franchise for the rest of your life, uh, give it to us. What, who would you choose? Chicago Cubs. Oh, what do you know? Coach Christner's loving that. Drew Van Andel with the hat on the show earlier. Chicago has taken over. Maria, that's all I have for now. Thank you. So I'm going to hand it back to my co-host, Dr. Timmer. All right. Christian, I hope you have a I, – I, am I back up there? You're all set? All right, I'm going to give a little pause. Okay. Yeah, thanks uh, for Ryan for that interview. And I didn't realize that until Drew wore the Cubs hat. I'm like, holy cow, it is a Cubs night on the round table. And that's why I had to throw in Alan Trammell, who actually was a bench coach for the Cubs and an interim, I think interim head uh, manager at one point for the Cubs. But it's very possible we've we've had a handful of those. <laughs> exactly. All right, Maria, here it is. The thing that makes no sense to anyone, it's 24 seconds, seven questions, it doesn't go 24 seconds, and it's probably eight questions, but we're just going to go with 24-7. And it's the same same question, number one. What's your favorite color? Blue. God, would somebody say maroon and gold? Just <laughs> one of our student athletes. <laughs> either one I would take. All right. What is your favorite social media? Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat? You're not on social media. Probably Instagram. Instagram. All right. Favorite piece of candy? Like, I'm a Reese's Pieces person. Well, I'm an M&M's person, too. I probably don't have a favorite, but I don't like chocolate, so nothing chocolate. <laughs> nothing chocolate? What, but anything? You can't? Maybe, like, Starburst or something. All right. Favorite TV show? Um, Grey's Anatomy. 17 years running. All right. If Did you ever play another sport? Um. Uh, higher like in high school where you were just a soccer player i played volleyball my freshman year and then after that it was soccer only yep all right uh who's the best dancer on the calvin women's soccer team probably kira schofield kira, kira schofield all right last question thank you for joining us tonight here's your last question who is your all-time favorite academic dean at Calvin College? Probably my mom, Elizabeth Vanderlei. All right. Do you have to call her Dean Vanderlei at, at, at home or do you, you can call her mom? <laughs> nope. I make, mom. My, I make my kids call, call me Dr. Timmer at home. So <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Hey, Maria, <laughs> one more question before we let you go. Just kind of bring in weaving different parts of the show together. Um, what is it going to take um, for you to put up 35 goals like assistant coach Tara Wagner? I just, I, what are we going to have to do there? Probably a miracle because she's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Simple enough. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Maria. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. Wow. What a great show tonight. We had uh, just full of guests, two student athletes and coach Krishner and, uh, you know, it's our final show before Thanksgiving. Um, and I wish everyone out there a great Thanksgiving with their families. Any way you celebrate it, I want everybody to travel safe home from, from Calvin University back to their homes and, and uh, so many exciting things that are going to be coming. We're going to have one more show this semester, the Christmas show. Um, it's going to be Christmas time. Uh, I'm going to have some Christmas decorations. Hopefully, Jeff and Ryan will have that in their background as well for our, our next show. So one more show this semester. But we are going to go with a new kind of, it's not a segment, but just I want final thoughts, anything that, that you're thinking about, um, uh, either related to the show or just where we're at. So start with you, Jeff, and, I, and I'll finish up. Yeah, I, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the things that come at me right now is, um, you know, I was just thinking recently, oh, this is no sleep November normally for uh, administrators and all that type of thing in athletics. And certainly I, I always look forward to that. It's a really exciting time. You get crossover fall.
football and winter sports and, you know, fall teams and their peak playing in the postseason, that kind of thing. So I miss it. But uh, by the same token, one of the blessings that I've had is the chance to, you know, be around my family a little bit more, especially my son's getting a little older now. And, you know, before I know it, they'll be out of the house. So just having the chance to spend a little time with them. One thing I've been able to do uh, both last spring and now this fall is uh, I've got a 13 year old who uh, has got a hunting license. We've got some uh, property that my in-laws own nearby. So here I am, the city slicker, and uh, I've been out turkey hunting and now deer hunting. And uh, this past weekend was uh, up in a deer blind uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, that was the new experience for me. Um, as I'm kind of chaperoning my son there who has gone through hunter safety and all that type of thing and has the proper licenses and such, but, uh, uh, it is an interesting experience and it is kind of fun to get outside and just to, uh, have some time with, uh, your family member. Um, I, I definitely cherish it while I have it. Thanks, Jeff. Ryan, final thought. That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, it's kind of a final thought. A, you will never catch me in a deer blind. I'll just tell you that right now. So good for you, Jeff, but that's just, that's just not happening. Um, you know, for me, I, I think one of the things that I've been really encouraged by actually, uh, especially over the past couple of weeks, I, I love Calvin athletics, you know, like I, I, I genuinely enjoy coming to work. Um, you know, most days, you know, I have colleagues that are friends of mine uh, that, you know, that have become family in many regards. I love our student athletes uh, getting to engage with our guys this fall. It was, it was different, but I think they were, they were up for it. Uh, I think they enjoyed it. It was just, um, it was enjoyable. And I think we've gone really hard, um, you know, as a, a program. And I think as a department really since March, because we didn't really know when this was going to end um, or still don't know when it's going to end. And, and I think one of the things I'm looking forward to kind of similar to Jeff um, is just pausing a bit here. You know, I know winter sports don't really have that luxury um, and, and we'll get back after it really in, in February, you know, January, February, pretty hard on the soccer side, but I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break, uh, just spending some time with family, um, eating some good food and perhaps maybe going for a run or two maybe i will see but yeah just uh really i'm I'm very bullish on the future of calvin athletics and uh you know ready to come out of the break uh you're ready to go all right well thank you both of you for your final thoughts my final going to be thoughts two of them and they're both come from the show tonight um uh, ryan i love and jeff your optimism uh, as we go on that's not one of my final thoughts but i have two i love juvenile's answer what would a senior tell a freshman and when he said Man, I was a bad soccer player. And here's a kid who's probably an All-American, and I think that just shows great maturity. Uh, and that's what I think makes Calvin athletes special, that that when they look back on their experience, they realize, that I had a great experience, but, man, I had a lot to learn. And I, I think that's a credit to both the, the soccer program and all the, uh, all the teammates that he's had um, to hang in there with him. I love that. The second thing, and this goes on my Thanksgiving thing, I wear many hats, even on this show, co-host. You ask me a question as an athletic director, but I'm also a dad. I'm thankful for Calvin Athletics because I have a daughter. And then listening to Coach Christner uh, talking about his drive to Maryland and thinking, wow, he might not have come to coach my daughter. And I, it has nothing to do with playing time. Gabby uh, earns that on her own, but uh, the atmosphere in the women's program for my daughter to be part of, I guess that's what I'm thankful for as we go into a Thanksgiving. And I'm not saying that because Coach Christner's still on here. I would say that to anybody. That atmosphere is great. And um, it, 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 it is different uh, coaching men than women, and I appreciate it. Um, and it's been a nice semester not yelling at officials for me. So uh, that, that part of a dad, I... I don't miss. Uh, so that's my Thanksgiving and that's my final thoughts. Great show tonight. We are, uh, we are going to be back better than ever, uh, in two weeks with our Christmas, uh, show, um, apparently with decorations Who knew, Jeff? With, de- with decorations behind us. Um, and so thank you. Thanks to Christian back in the studio. Thank you to our guests and all our sponsors. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. You.